I'm Chase Levitt, and welcome back to We Are Here. Today, I'm joined by David Pine. David, thank you so much for joining me. You bet. Thanks for having me on your show. Of course. So do you just want to take a minute to tell everyone kind of your background, who you are, and stuff like that? Yeah. So <clears throat> I am uh, currently serving as the uh, Deputy Director of National Operations for the Task Force on National Security. Um, I'm also a former U.S. Army officer. I served on the uh, U.S. Army headquarters staff as the uh, international programs manager in charge of um, the Middle East, uh, former Soviet Union, Eastern Europe, um, the Americas, and Africa from 2000 to 2003. Uh, traveled to Israel and uh, other places around the world as part of a, a Department of De Defense de uh, delegations. And I currently have a, um, I'm currently the editor of the Real War newsletter on um which is uh, available at dpyne.substack.com. Awesome. Thank you. So um, as I had mentioned before, when we were talking, I kind of want to talk about uh, the conflict going on in Israel. The um, The Hamas terrorist group just savagely attacked them. Um, it's terrible what's going on over there. So the first thing I want to ask you about is, can you kind of explain the history behind the Israel-Palestine <laughs> kind of conflict and um, why you believe the Hamas terrorist group ultimately attacked Israel and kind of just the background around that. Yeah, sure. So this goes back to uh, 1947 when, um, you know, Israel was um, essentially, well, Palestine, then the, uh, what used to be a British mandate was divided into two. Um, and uh, the territory that was allowed to the, to the Jewish state was uh, much smaller um, in 1947. 48, essentially, uh, Israel was uh, uh, was invaded by five different countries, um, and uh, Palestine. Um, you know, part of, part of the the attempt was to essentially give over the you know drive the Jews into the sea and uh, give uh, Palestine back to the Arabs that you know possessed it for uh, most of uh, you know the past uh, I don't know fifteen hundred plus years uh, since the Romans. Um, you know, killed off a lot of the Jews uh, uh, following the uh, the death of uh, Jesus Christ. But um, yeah, there's been multiple wars. There have been four major wars. There was the uh, the 1948 war, the 1956 war. Uh, there was the the Six Day War of 1967, uh, the Yom Kippur War of uh, 1973. And then there's been several other wars. Uh, most recently, the Gaza War of um, of 2014, uh, which happened very similarly to what's going down right now. Uh, but the the attacks were um, less drastic and and there were less atrocities. Um, that ended with a, a Israeli full invasion of uh, the Gaza Strip that lasted 18 days before they withdrew. So um, uh, Hamas, a lot of people may not realize that Hamas is an invention uh, was founded um, uh, by Israeli intelligence to try to divide the uh, uh, the Palestinian uh, factions, uh, the kind of leftist. Um, Fatah faction uh, was viewed as the main threat to Israel at the time, and so it was thought that if uh, if Israel could create um, a more Islamist hardline faction, that that could potentially weaken uh, the Palestinian, uh, like the PLO, internally. Uh, but that's backfired very badly, of course, on Israel as as Hamas has slaughtered uh, you know over a thousand Israelis uh, in this these recent attacks, which uh, you know we have to all condemn as as horrific. Right, for sure. And, and I mean, it's just completely, like you said, it's horrific what's going on. And, and the fact that they're going after women and, and children and, and babies, even, it's just terrible. Um, the next thing I want to ask you, a lot of, th of people are kind of speculating that Iran had a big uh, involvement in this in this attack. So what are your thoughts on that? They absolutely did. There was a, a really good Wall Street Journal article that came out either Saturday or Sunday that uh, detailed uh, Iranian involvement. Essentially, they'd been working with Hamas and, and planning these attacks uh, for at least three months. And uh, in fact, they reportedly even greenlighted the attacks. So um, the timing of the attacks were essentially, uh, you know, planned and, and chosen um, by uh, the Iranian terror regime. So, um, Israel, the Israelis, uh, you know, Israeli government officials have stated that that if they found that to be verified that to be true, they might engage in a campaign of assassinations against um, Iranian Iranians, uh, Iran senior leaders. 
And that's uh, very risky because, uh, you know, that could result in a, a major escalation of the war uh, with potentially with direct Iranian involvement. And Iran is a nuclear power. A lot of people don't realize this, but um, Iran is, has had nuclear weapons for, for many years, um, according to Dr. Peter Pry and other another former uh, CIA uh, uh, director, uh, James Woolsey, uh, as well as other experts, uh, including myself. Um, and they've had, I mean, they were mere months away um, from uh, nuclear tech, you know, nuclear we weapons um, in 2003 when I was still in the army staff. Uh, and then shortly after, after on the missile defense agency. And so we've heard this for 20 years. We've heard they're, they're on the cusp of, you know, of nuclear weapons development. I mean, before you were even born, you know, the, the Israelis were saying, Hey, we may need to go take out their nuclear facilities. And uh, it's just kind of ridiculous to think that, um, you know, an Iranian terror regime would, would, suspend its nuclear weapons program for any reason short of military coercion if we were you know to engage in a bombing campaign which we never did unfortunately all of our leaders with the exception of donald trump have been appeasing iran um and uh, of course we know that obama biden gave them 152 billion dollars to help them uh you know finish developing their nukes and then biden of course freed up another six billion which um Credibly, we a lot of people believe that may have been used to fund us this very terrorist assault on, on israel Right. Do, do you believe that that contributed to that, the six billion that Biden? I do. Yeah. Iran or I mean, uh, the Biden regime is claiming that none of the, the money has actually been taken out, uh, that it's all it's not frozen, it's available for Iran, but they haven't seen any withdrawals. I mean, it's so it's just so ridiculous. The lies uh, we've seen from the Biden administration, um, they've even claimed that uh, there's no evidence, you know, there's evidence that Iran was surprised uh, that the attacks occurred, uh, which is really unbelievable because Hamas uh, is and always, almost always has been a Iranian proxy force, as is Hezbollah, which unfortunately is likely to attack Israel as soon as, um, in ma massively as soon as um, Israel begins their invasion of the Gaza Strip. Right. And so you mentioned that um, with the exception of Donald Trump, our other presidents have been appeasing Iran. What was it that President Trump did that uh, pushed back on Iran and helped people kind of understand um, what his foreign policy was on that? Well, it was called the Maximum Pressure Campaign. And so he uh, he wisely, when he became president, he pulled the U.S. out of the what's called the Joint Plan of Action or the GPOA. Uh, the GPOA was, uh, you know, this this fake uh, this terrible uh, Obama-Biden agreement with Iran, in which they would pretend to suspend their their uh, nuclear uh, weapons program with uh, inspections that they had. I mean, essentially, you know, we gave them like sixty days notice or thirty days notice uh, before any, and they could they could decline it inspections at any time, and they they they've been doing exactly that. So not only could they relocate all their you know weapons from any any site to be inspected. Uh, but they could actually, you know, they actually actually just refuse them altogether. So it, it it's an agreement that it's an agreement that had no effective verification at all, uh, no teeth, no enforceability. Um, and so he, uh, you know, he, you know, kept the uh, like the UN sanctions regime and, and U.S. sanctions regime against Iran that really, um, you know, I mean, it couldn't do a whole lot, you know, given that we gave them 152 billion previously, including two two billion in uh, in U.S. taxpayer money on on an aircraft as kind of a you know bribe seal the deal money, uh, because uh, Obama was so desperate to have this agreement with Iran. Um, you know, very strangely, Obama and Biden have viewed um, Iran as kind of the key to peace in the Middle East, and I guess you. You know, if that were possible, that, you know, that might be logical because uh, essentially so much of the conflict, all the terrorist movements are funded and, and uh, aided by Iran. Uh, so if you could if you could flip Iran to a friend, convince them that terrorism is necessary by bribing him, um, then maybe that would make sense. But the very idea of, of bribing terrorists and Islamist hardliners, uh, it seems nonsensical to me. But, yeah, that was really the key that Trump did is, is he was. Uh, very firm. Of course, he killed uh, famously, uh, you know, uh, General uh, Soleimani, who was the uh, commanding general of the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps, uh, which is is tasked with 
uh, not only destroying Israel, but uh, spreading Iranian uh, revolution and power throughout the Middle East. And that was back in uh, January of 2020, correct? That one? Yes, that's correct. All right. So now I want to know kind of what are your thoughts on U.S. involvement? How involved do we get? And and to what extent do we send? Is it money? Is it um, weaponry? What, What does that look like for you? Yeah, so the, the way to restore deterrence from a U.S. perspective is to resume the Trump policy of, you know, the maximum pressure campaign. Uh, just like with, with uh, China over Taiwan, if China were to invade Taiwan, you know, we should not respond direct uh, with direct military force because that would that be World War III and it would quickly escalate to the nuclear level. Uh, but with you know, with Iran, I mean, I think they're unlikely to, to nuke us. I think they do have a few missiles that, that could range us. Um, you know, because we're, you know, we have so much, so many more nuclear weapons than they do. But, um, uh, yeah, economic um, warfare would be the, the best thing to do. Um, there have been some scary calls, you know, from uh, General uh, Barry McCaffrey, uh, who's a Democrat, by the way. Um, he uh, has advocated going to war if, if, if uh, Iran or Syria attack Israel. He says that the U.S. should attack them back and uh conduct bombing strikes i'm assuming not invade them <laughs> because that would be uh that would be disastrous but uh, i mean the, the idea of u.s military escalation against uh you know an, another nuclear power you know direct war is it's never been done we've never never done that before north korea you know we we never bombed them once they got nukes we fought obviously we fought a war in 1950 and 1953 against china and north korea when they were non-nuclear powers so um you know, we have seen some skirmishes uh, between, uh, for example, China and the Soviet Union, between uh, China and India, between India and Pakistan. There were like border skirmishes between nuclear powers, but really didn't involve air and missile strikes and weren't really serious, serious wars. They're just really border skirmishes. Uh, but, uh, you know, direct strikes against a nuclear power, that would really raise the threshold. And Iran is uh, closely allied with Russia and China. A lot of people don't realize they're formal members of the the, uh, the Sino-Russian Military Alliance, which is the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. So any uh, direct attack against Iran could bring bring in China and Russia into the war, and that uh, that would be World War III. And I noticed this morning that Trump uh, has actually warned of that very possibility. He says uh, this is shaping up. This could potentially escalate to World War III. But the only way it does, I think is if the U.S. gets involved. Otherwise, it stays to, stays a regional war, and, which I think that Israel would likely win because I don't think Iran and Syria will get involved directly. Right. So now I want to ask, um, how does this conflict right now affect the world um, as a whole um, in any way, shape, or form? You know, I don't think it really does affect the world. I mean, uh, the war in Ukraine, I don't think really affected the world other than what the way, the way we responded to it. and, and it, serving to strengthen Russia, both militarily and economically, rather than weaken it, um, as the war has, has, has uh, turned out, as, as, you know, Russia has increased the size of its military by 50%, um, you know, increased the, its defense budget by 68% just from this year to next. Um, but in terms of the Israel war, you know, I think it's it's pretty well contained right now. Um I do think Hezbollah is, Hezbollah is inevitably going to enter the war. So it's going to, right now it's going to be an Israeli war against terror. And as long as it stays that way and it doesn't escalate to an interstate war with Iran and Syria, um, I think it's going to affect us very little. You know, of course we, we want to help uh, the Israelis. Uh, we have a security agreement that doesn't um, compel us to defend them, but it does uh, require that we provide military assistance to them in terms of uh, weapons and uh, ammunition to help defend themselves. So I support doing that. I think that's in the U.S. interest. And I think that uh, we might even want to consider sending special forces troops once uh, Israel invades Gaza to rescue the uh, uh, reported 17 host- American hostages in uh, Hamas hands. So I know a lot of people who look at Republicans who are supporting Israel but are against aid to Ukraine can you kind of talk about the differences between the two conflicts? Yeah, I mean, so the U.S. has zero history of ever being uh, an ally of Ukraine. Uh, it was the Democrats that lyingly claimed that, uh, you know, Trump was suspending arms shipments to an ally of war. Ukraine was never not an ally 
And, uh, you know, he actually never suspended weapons. That, that's the, the irony is that it was Obama that refused to give weapons to Ukraine and Trump was the first president who did and never suspended at any, at any time during his discussions with Zelensky. And that, that came out during the, um, the Democrat impeachment hearings from, I think, some of their own witnesses. Um, but, uh, yeah, the difference is, um, you know, the war in Ukraine is much, much more dangerous. Like people ask me, oh, are you worried that this war in Israel is going to escalate to World War Three or, the, you know, the, the end of the world? I'm like, I'm much more worried about Ukraine because um, that war has been going on 19 months. Um, we've been engaging in proxy attacks against Russia itself, cyber attacks, uh, perhaps even kinetic sabotage attacks. Um likely done by ukraine but i mean the the head of u.s cyber command has actually stated that um uh we are we are openly engaging in offensive cyber operations to get cyber attacks against russia so that's a very scary thing if, if they uh you know i've been worried for a while that they could um you know attack us back with a massive cyber attack that could destroy our country you know a lot of people don't realize that cyber is an existential threat like super EMP and nuclear weapons um, so that war is a much more dangerous conflict that we need to bring to an end as quickly as possible. And I think, as you alluded to, you know, Trump, uh, President Trump, Ron, uh, Governor Ron DeSantis and Vivek Ramaswamy, and of course, here here in Utah, Trent Staggs running for Senate are, are very strongly, um, you know, supporting uh, America first. You know, we don't like we have all these politicians like Romney, they're America last, put Ukraine first. And I think it's it's borderline traitorous to uh to put the interests of a foreign power above above that of your own country i think that's true of any country but certainly of our own and i think we need to call it every politician that um you know puts ukraine above uh national security interests of our own especially when this this could be an existential threat that could end the end of america's very existence right um another th the next thing i want to talk about a little bit is how cause a lot of people say, you know, Joe Biden, his foreign policy has led to um, some of these events happening around the world with Ukraine, with Israel, stuff like that. So how has U.S. leadership directly or directly affected the, these conflicts? Well, it's been amazing, uh, you know, since Biden became president, how uh, the world that was relatively peace and stable and prosperous, you know, the U.S. was prosperous under under uh, Trump. Uh, with a you know huge economic recovery from the COVID downturn, um, has you know Biden has transformed the world and, and you know basically made it you know catch fire essentially with all his foolish policies, appeasing and allying with our enemies, betraying our friends. Um, you know his his withdrawal with Afghanistan was uh, you know was just uh, you know was ridiculously hor horrible uh, hor horribly planned. A lot of uh, good U.S. soldiers, men and women, uh, were killed unnecessarily. Uh, Trump had a good plan to to withdraw from Afghanistan, um, which was a good move, by the way, just to to pull out of Afghanistan for twenty years. Uh, but he was going to pull out, you know, leave uh, Bagram as as the uh, the last place to withdraw from, which because it was extremely well defended and and safe. And uh, if we'd done that, none of our troops would have been killed. Um, we could have pulled out all of our allies that we wanted to in terms of uh, Afghans that had served as translators and uh, allied with us and aided us during, during the war. And most importantly, the fourth, you know, the 4,000 plus U S citizens that Biden reportedly have left behind. I mean, the idea that you leave U S citizens behind is, is just, uh, just outrageous. So um, I, I don't think that Biden that, you know, a lot of Republicans falsely say that, uh, Oh, it's because Biden showed weakness in Afghanistan that Putin invaded Ukraine. No, it's because Putin re or Biden refused Putin's peace treaty uh, that he offered in December of 2021. Um, you know, he even you know re refused to guarantee that Ukraine would remain neutral outside of NATO, which was uh, we could have done with at no cost to us because uh, every it's an open secret that Ukraine will never join NATO because France and Germany will never agree to it, as well as Turkey and uh, Hungary and various and Slovakia now as well. Um, so, you know, it's imperative that we, uh, you know, pursue, uh, Trump's and Vivek's plan to, uh, to make, uh, you know, peace with Russia in Ukraine. And if we, if we were to do that, uh, you know, I've even proposed a peace plan. I was the first one, I think, to propose a, a ceasefire and armistice agreement, uh, following Russia's annexation of, of four Ukrainian oblasts. Um, and we could do that, you know, it'd be a Korean style, um, 
armistice. And if we were to do that and combine it with a mutual security agreement, which the U.S. Um, and Russia withdrew its troops from Eastern Europe, um, then we could we could essentially neutralize the uh, the Sino-Russian alliance and fundamentally transform uh, the uh, uh, the world the geopolitical situation in our favor. Um, so, uh, you know, Vivek Ramaswamy, uh, who I've who I've helped out um, and advised, has has done a good job with that with with his, his peace plan. Well, thank you for that answer. And the last thing I want to ask you is, how do you think this this conflict in Israel ends? So, yeah, as I as I said, I'm I'm confident that it ends with in an Israeli victory, but it's it's going to be a lot costlier than the last time around. You know, this um, they're talking about uh, not just uh, weakening Hamas; they want to eradicate it essentially. So, um, I don't think they're going to kill every. You know, they're not going to succeed in killing all of the Hamas militants, but uh, the objective for me ought to be to um, to transfer, you know, essentially get uh, Fatah, which is, uh, you know, ha- they have power and control over West- the West Bank to, um, you know, to take over the Gaza Strip um, from Hamas. And they need to, to ban Hamas as, as a political party or as a militant force. And as long as that agreement was enforced and Fatah controls uh, the Gaza Strip, I think, um, you know, we can reach a durable peace or Israel can reach a durable peace uh, with with the, the PLO um, without Hamas. But it, yeah, Hamas absolutely needs to be banned, eradicated, uh, even just go into exile. I mean, there's there's all kinds of options. But unfortunately, we can't really trust Hamas to, to keep keep their word. So it, uh, I think it really will require Israel to invade Gaza. Um, but I, I do think it ends with a with a costly um, is, Israeli victory that doesn't include Iran and Syria. Uh, there will be uh, Hezbollah attacks, probably raids and massive uh, rocket attacks. Uh, according to General Keane, um, Hezbollah has about 130,000 rockets and missiles they could use to rain down in Israel and really overwhelm uh, Israeli's missile defense uh, system, which I helped work on back in the Missile Defense Agency almost almost two decades ago. Well, David, thank you so much for all your answers and and thank you for your insight. You know, a lot of people don't really understand what's going on. So hopefully this can this can help them out. So thank you so much for coming on. And one more time, can you just let people know where they can find you um, on social media and stuff like that? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, again, my real war uh, newsletter is uh, is at uh, dpyne.substack.com. Uh, D, again, dpyne.substack.com, and um, there your your viewers can uh, subscribe to my newsletter. Uh, there's free and paid options. Uh, a lot of my articles are free, uh, but some some are paid. So um, uh, I post my latest updates there. Uh, try to post uh, you know once or twice a week. Um, lately, I've been posting probably a little more than that, just because of the, there are so many national security issues that are erupting worldwide under under the Biden uh, regime. Yeah. Well, thank you so much again for coming on. It was great talking with you. Thanks. Really appreciate it.